ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम But let's take it to be heavy in comparison to the electron, and all your chemistry way of handling is you can call that as one s shell, two s shell, two p shell, and so on, right? And you can also write. You can here you can put the lines with the exact Indian Resi, one s shell. Is principal quantum number n equal to one, l equal to zero, but you can have the red line and this one are the two spin states possible, so it is two-fold degenerate, and so on. Right? Two s shell is again going to have both n equal to one, l equal to zero, but why have I put four lines? Is that allowed? No, right? Yes or no? No. So it's not right. Yeah, everything is written as two s. So I made a mistake. Okay, so you understand what exactly you do in your chemistry course. One s is two-fold degenerate, two s is two-fold degenerate, two p will be six-fold degenerate, and so on. Okay, so you can. And the potential energy is a central potential, which is one over r potential. Once you see this one over r potential, you know what coordinate system to choose. Spherical polar coordinates because R then you can separate your potential energy to be only acting on the R coordinate. The other potential energies are not there. So Cartesian coordinate is not a good coordinate when you want to solve hydrogen atom problem. You mechanically put in spherical polar coordinates and solve it. The reason is that the potential energy becomes potential energy becomes dependent only on the radial coordinate. So it's better to work on the R theta phi coordinate. No point in working on x, y. You can work with x, y, z, but then it becomes more complicated. The choice of coordinates, spherical polar coordinates, is convenient, and you can choose because u of r theta phi is actually u of r only. There is no theta phi component, and we can write the separable wave function as a product of the radial dependent, the theta dependent, and the phi dependent. So the Hamiltonian for the Hydrogen atom in three dimensions. You can write del squared and compactly. I am not writing explicitly what this Laplacian is, but you know what to do. And there is a one over r. So substitute r theta phi and rewrite your Laplacian in the spherical coordinates. And then what do you do? You try and sep separate out the two equations. Right. First, let's write this whole solution. And you can see from here there is an R dependence here, R dependence here, and theta dependent, phi dependent. So we try and separate it out. The conventional way we did. First, write psi as R of R omega of theta phi, and then we put omega of theta phi as the theta dependent and the phi. So do it in two steps. To make things. Incidentally, when I'm typing this equation, I might have made some mistake. If there is any mistake, please bring it to my notice. I have to edit it. Okay. So this is the usual conventional way we try to do. Only thing is we are trying to divide by an R squared also, so that we get terms which are R of R dependent P's. Omega of theta phi dependent p. This is R dependent p. How will you write? You will write this plus this last term to be some e1 times psi, and this plus this to be e minus e1, something like that. Okay. 
we can rewrite so that theta phi dependent terms are equated to r dependent terms. There is a d by dr here. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So there is no sign. Okay. Yeah. Probably I have taken care of it here. This should also be d by dr. Yeah. So as he pointed it out, the psi is not there. Yes. So this is one constant which is explicitly dependent only on theta and phi. There is another equation. You split it up into two pieces. One dependent on theta phi and another dependent on small r. So the next question is for the, the first top equation, we will try to rewrite it. Again breaking it up into product of theta and phi and divide by that. So you have an equation which is, this is familiar. What is the solution here? Solution is like the same problems which you have been doing. Exponential. Hmm. And this one will be, this is a non-trivial. So having got these equations, you can go back and look at special functions and see what the solutions are. So in order to make contact with the actual physics which, is, which has this magnetic quantum number, we take alpha to be minus n square and then we can solve this. Solution will be a e part i n phi. Equivalently, you should also know that this phi is an angular coordinate. Phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. If suppose I put phi to be 4 pi. It should be same as the 0 coordinate or 2 pi coordinate. That will kind of fix for me that this m cannot be fractions. m has to be integers. The single valuedness of the wave function in the angle coordinates, like unlike your free particle in the real line, which was e to the i k x, the k can be anything. Here, if you put it on a circle or an angular coordinate with identification of 0 with 2, 2 m times pi, you will be forced to choose m to be only integers. That is why the magnetic quantum numbers are also integers which is consistent. So, this is what I am saying that the single valued wave function that the phi dependent piece has to satisfy this which implies m is an integer and then we get to the theta dependent equation substituting that constant alpha which will be there and this is the equation to solve. So, you can see that the theta, the capital theta, that wave function will be dependent on the value for m on. This equation has this m. So, make a change of variable just for convenience and then the equation is nothing but our familiar Legendre associated Legendre. So this is the differential equation for associated Legendre polynomials. So what are the solutions? You can compactly write the solution just like the way we wrote for Hermite polynomials some kind of a compact Rodrick formula you can try to write it. For a specific L, L is the azimuthal quantum number, M is your magnetic quantum number because we know chemistry, we can try to give the meaning in the same way so that we remember them. Okay. And just play around and work out for L equal to 1, L equal to 2 just to get a feel of how these associated legendar polynomials are. Okay, so I did not say what the C is. For this solution, the C has to be, minus C has to be L into L plus 1. And they have to be non-negative integers. That is also important. To make contact with the differential equation for special functions, you can compare the C to be this where L is a non-negative integer. And your magnetic quantum number, which is there in your associated legendar functions, legendar polynomials, have to be restrictive. It cannot be arbitrary. It has to go from minus n to plus n. This is all implied by 
looking at this differential equation, matching it with the differential equations for special functions in the mathematics. We are not doing anything here by any other method. But we will get to it in some other fashion when we are doing it from the Dirac formats. Okay, so what is the final theta phi dependent part of the wave function? We have already seen it is e to the i e m phi for the phi dependent piece. Now we have also argued that the theta phi dependent piece, which you can write the theta cos theta as x, as a legender, associated legender polynomials. This product, this product of PLM e to the i m phi is always called in the literature as spherical harmonics. Okay. And it is denoted by a capital Y LM theta phi. Okay. So we will come to these issues of playing with uh, spherical harmonics. But this is the connection. The associated legendar polynomial multiplied by e to the im phi together is called as a spherical harmonics. Normalization is one thing which you should work it out, at least for a specific L and a specific M, but it can be determined for a general L and M. How do you do the normalization here? Integral of d theta alone or you have to put d cos theta. d cos theta and d phi, you have to integrate cos theta, theta goes from 0 to phi and phi goes from 0 to 2 phi and then you have to fix the normalization. Okay. What is left? The radial part. Done the angular part, we need to do the radial part. So, we substitute that capital C which relates your omega theta phi, okay, but in plug it in here and this is what you get for the radial part of the equation. I have already inserted a small n here in anticipation. What is the anticipation? This L is dependent there. This differential equation is exactly like your what, what special function? Associated Legger polynomials. If you go and check special function polynomial for associated Legger polynomials. So, this is the differential equation satisfied by associated Legger polynomials. We are not deriving them, we are just matching with what is known in the differential equation context right now. So, what is the solution? Solutions are given in the literature. If you remember, I was trying to give you this Grand Smith orthogonalization for function spaces and I was trying to say that you should put a weightage factor so that you and this hydrogen atom, the radial coordinate goes from 0 to infinity, right? The square integrable functions. So, the, you have an e to the power of minus half r or a function of r, I am calling it as rho r and the associated Legger polynomial and there is a condition that n and l are not arbitrary. Your l should always be less than or equal to less than or equal to also less than n should be greater than n. Okay. So, this rho r which I have written is just a function multiplied, it is proportional to r, but there is a more radius a naught attached to it. Okay. So, this is all from matching with what is there and what we know by convention, what is the more radius, you can try to write the solution in a very compact fashion. This is a minor thing to do. But given some differential equation here, to find the solution, if it is familiar from the mathematics literature, we just pull out the solution 
and rewrite all those variables accordingly. Okay. There he may not be energy, may be some constant, but now we can try to write that energy as in terms of this. So he n is proportional to 1 over n squared with a negative sign. So why a negative sign? Bound state. Positive solutions are allowed or no? Positive energy? Not for the bound state, but you can have scattering states. You can sit and play around for a specific N and a specific L and see whether you get the normalization. Here the normalization will be integral over dr, r squared should also be there. Huh? Explicitly, the normalization in three dimension, in three dimension, it's integral dv, psi star, xyz, psi xyz. This should be 1. dv is in dv in uh, Cartesian is dx dy dz. In Cartesian. In spherical, polar, it is dr r squared sin theta d theta d phi, right? So now I'm trying to say that if you write your psi as the function of r theta phi as omega theta phi times r of r, then integral sin theta d theta d phi omega of theta phi mod squared should be 1. What about r squared? mod r squared will be multiplied by this piece. Okay, so you will have mod r of r whole squared dr r squared. This is purely coming from the Jacobian. When you take x, y, z to r theta phi, these factors are coming out of the coin. Many of the students in my last so many years is that they forget about these r squared when you do the normalization. But when you go to spherical coordinates, there is a non-trivial Jacobian, you have to remember that. So it is r squared dr sin theta d theta d phi mod omega theta phi whole squared mod r of r whole squared. This has to be 1. That is the normalization. You can split it up into r piece and theta phi piece. But the normalization has to be with the volume factor in that appropriate volume. What happens in cylindrical coordinates? So suppose I write psi rho phi z will be a dz rho d rho d phi. You understand? You have to remember this. Many of them forget these things and then it leads to completely a wrong process. Okay, so let me stop here that it is an associated Legendre function and I will put this up for you and you can verify a couple of things. So the next lecture I will continue a little bit on how to get into the stern gerlach experiment. See what I should do the following time.